Today is the start of DC's Comic Con. It's called Awesome Con. You can see right here what it looks like. There's also a little bit of controversy that emerged about their Comic Con. And it all started with a tweet that Awesome Con put out. It said, talk about superheroes. Employees at the CIA may not have acquired their abilities from a radioactive spider or a benevolent wizard, but they do have remarkable superpowers to protect America. The CIA will be at hashtag Awesome Con. Make sure to find them. So what people on the internets, which I love, on Twitter dug up um, was a little bit of weirdness about this photo. Not just the fact that the CIA was promoting themselves through Comic-Con, but Saladin Ahmed tweeted, not sure which is grosser, the CIA trying to recruit geeks at cons or them faking diversity to do so. And what he means by this is he tweeted the photo screenshot of the ad, um, but he also tweeted this image, which is where they got the ad. It was a stock photo. <laughs> So, what do you all think? I mean, in an effort. She is confident. <laughs> in an effort to possibly recruit people who look like that woman who have a headscarf, they are trying to appeal to the geeks and to possibly Muslims. Mm -hmm. So, do you think they don't have anyone in the entire organization that maybe fits their diversity bill enough? I mean, or. You know, or maybe the person isn't willing to be out there. I, I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about this. Because then, you know, there's ways where you say you want to create, diver create diversity within your organization, which is great. But the reasons behind it is so you can have a more diverse organization that fits, that actually accesses and understands what they're doing for those people that you're supposed to be helping out or, or surveilling or servicing, whoever, whatever mm -hmm. your ideal is in that particular moment. So if you want to have diversity so you can figure out how the best way to approach certain communities, have those folks in. and. Let them be honest, let them be themselves. But when you just, what this shows is when you throw a stock photo up, you're like, yeah, we want people to think so. When really there's no one here that knows anything about this community whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna interject real quickly that people within the Arab and Muslim community were used to after 9-11, the CIA and FBI coming to our events and sponsoring them. So people would take the money because they needed the money because we were a very maligned group of people. But None of us were really happy to get FBI pens in our gift bag. Mm -hmm. And so this has been a strategy which probably is unsuccessful because they're continuing to try to recruit from our community and they still don't have us. What's the pitch? I'm sorry, what would be the right pitch? Because well, okay. I believe in diversity, what's the best way they okay, should do it? Because I don't believe that they're willing to do it the right way, so I wonder what is. Well, let's go to this tweet, which I think actually explains or encapsulates the problem even better, which is from ICE level. <laughs> um, Excelsior, true believers. You're favorite webhead and Earth's mightiest heroes are headed to the global south to squints, destabilize the democratically elected government because they won't give us natural resources for cheap. <laughs> so yeah. that's what folks on Twitter believe is the pitch. Yeah, it, it kind of, like on one level, why did they use a stock photo? Because they're not gonna set up a photo shoot for a stupid Twitter ad, I get that. But the, doing the diversity in the form of just a photo when substantively, it doesn't really bear any relation to the effect that the CIA has on the world at large, women at large, the Muslim world more specifically. It reminds me of like the thing where for like women's empowerment, McDonald's like turned the M into a W. <laughs> it's like, okay, so you're thinking about them, I guess, um, but that's not substantive. And when you think about the effect that the CIA and other American intelligence agencies have had on areas of the world where people might look like the woman in that photo, you think, Jesus, I, I guess they gotta try to diversify, but like they're really hoping that people don't know a lot about the history of the organization or America's foreign policy. Well, so there's a little bit more controversy to this too, because allegedly, um, so let me back up a second. So the CIA, as they said in that tweet that was posted by Awesome Con, has panels during the event. Oh. Yes. So, and we'll we'll throw to some of those, <laughs> but it's an issue because um, that's a sponsored <coughs> tweet. Yeah. And they allege that the CIA submitted their own panels and got accepted and approved outside of- What are the panels? Okay, we'll see, let's throw it. <laughs> I, I, um, and, uh, my favorite is, what is it? Uh, very secret, very cool, but not aliens. The U2, <laughs> the A12, and the A51. Some heroes wear cardigans, librarians at CIA. Hidden plain sight, Glomar, Explorer, and Virginia 
Paul, um, thinking like a DO, which is a director's of operations officer. Einstein as an asset. This one's kind of bizarre, which is they have you become a directorate of operations and see how you would respond to this moment where Einstein gave Roosevelt like some scientific information. Uh, so they do, they do play, they do immersive game. I sort of. <laughs> I wow, I'm glad that you found those because I didn't know about that. Uh, I've actually, this is gonna shock some people because they know I'm nerdy. I've never been to Comic Con, but I've been to other cons. I've been to Strategic Con and Awesome Con and uh, PAX and stuff like that. You've been to Awesome Con. No, no, not Awesome <laughs> Con, sorry, uh, Kingdom Con. Uh, what does any of those panels have to do with pop culture, <laughs> even <laughs> defined very broadly? So broadly. I'm still trying, okay, I've never been to any cons except for Polita. So, <laughs> what is the end game here for this for Recruit, Awesome Con? Man. Period. Just I'm assuming everybody there is looking to recruit for certain kind of jobs. Well, there, different fields. I, I, is that I, the only? That's not a no. That's not a big part of cons. <coughs> jobs. This particular one, awesome con. That I don't know. I mean, they have they have comics. I assume. Okay, I'm the worst person. Because <laughs> no, I can say that generally, Comic Con is a place where fans of a variety of different sorts of pop culture come for right. movies and TV. But and, you get something yeah. done. Maybe people meet their favorite whatever. Their the guy who wrote that comic book or the person who created that whatever. At this one, who, who am I going so to what look I th for? But what I think the CIA is doing is they're trying to market themselves as a real life superhero, mm -hmm. which is what is appealing in terms of like the idea of who is celebrated, what protagonists are celebrated at Comic Con, mm -hmm. right? And so that's that's the edge, and that's the foot that they want in the door. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I get why they would want that. I just don't know why Awesome Con would be okay with it. I mean, I guess. Best case scenario, they got paid. Well, okay, so some other thing that we have to, we can step into is that the Defense Department jumps on any movie that ha uses military grade equipment. Yeah. So they are a yeah. part of the conversation. In fact, there's another sort of controversy around Marvel having used a defense contractor that they finally let go because it, he was very aligned to the military mm -hmm. uh, or profiting off of war, yeah. and so they let him go. But so those two worlds are merged in certain weird, bizarre yeah, ways. Right. And I think this is kind of a, a funny story, but it, it sheds light on a lot of stuff. Yeah, um, do, and, and really fast on that, we have talked previously about, um, I think Michael Bay has had long, in his movies, he works very closely with the military and all of that. And obviously he's like the best example of it, but. Whenever you watch movies that involve, like I think it was Ben Mankiewicz tweeted recently, he was like, "There's no, there's no war movie that's anti-war." Like at the end of the day, yeah, they all absolutely. glorify it. Mm -hmm. They might try to make it gritty or realistic, but it always glorifies it, and that sort of partnership is designed to ensure that. Right, and you never hear the story from the person yeah. who the U.S. military is at war with or awesome. occupying. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com/app.